Hello everyone, good morning. This is Sage, live from Kalkine Studios, and you are watching The Early Trades. The simmering inflation expectations continue to drive the market volatility. Let us cast an eye over how the market charter is panning out on a day after the federal budget. Australian shares slipped on Thursday as local technology stocks got whacked after a stronger than expected US inflation data raised concerns of a tighter monetary policy and set off further selling in growth stocks on Wall Street. Wall Street closed lower overnight as inflation data showed consumer prices unexpectedly rose by the most in nearly 12 years in April, fueling concerns over whether interest rate hikes from the Federal Reserve could happen sooner than anticipated. In other markets, Japan's Nikkei was down 1.36% and the S&P 500 E-minis futures were up 0.25%. Back home, Aussie tech stocks tracked a slump on the Nasdaq and tumbled more than 5% to their lowest since October 2020. Accounting software platform Zero fell 11% even as it reported higher full-year results. Sector heavyweight afterpay slumped as well, 7%. Moving on, gold stocks slipped as the precious metal snapped a five-session winning streak after April's jump in the US. Consumer prices buoyed the dollar and the treasury yields. Spot gold index was down by 1% to US $1,817. 0.30 cents an ounce. Gold miners such as Northern Star Resources Limited, Newcrest Mining Limited, Evolution Mining Limited joined the broader market sell-off. Looking at the energy themes, Australian energy producers such as Santos Limited, Woodside Petroleum Limited and Beach Energy Limited are trading in the green zone. Hopes of rising demand at the economy is Expected to recover faster than previous expectations pushed oil prices to eight-week highs. Let us now look at the US market performance overnight that is closely tracked across global market participants. The prospect of tighter monetary policy knocked shares lower amid simmering inflation expectations and all prominent stock indices fell further in red by the closing. The selling route put the major stock indices on track for their worst week in more than six months. The selling accelerated as investors reacted to an unexpected sharp surge in inflation in April 2021 that stoked concerns that the economy may recover too fast from its pandemic-induced bruises. Concerns about rising inflation also raised the question of whether the US Fed will change its stance on keeping the interest rates low as the economy recovers. However, considering the economy and particularly the job market, there is still a long way for a full recovery. A moderate inflation may actually be good for a recovering economy. Therefore, the prevailing sentiment in the market could be temporary though it's too early to say whether these higher levels are going to be sustained. And moving on to a latest announcement, IFM Investors, an Australian superannuation fund owned by 27 Australian Union and employer-backed industry superannuation funds, bought a 16% stake in the Colonial Pipeline in 2007 for 651 million US dollars and the privately owned pipeline transports 2.5 million barrels of gasoline and fuel from Texas to New England, a distance of 10,000 kilometres serving the largest airports in the US. Thursday has seen the pipeline resume operations since the shutdown by a cyber attack. However, it will not be at its full capacity for several more days and the closure of the pipeline caused nearly half of petrol pumps in North Carolina and Georgia in the USA to run out of fuel. Being valued at $8 billion, eyes are now on IFM who has board member Jim Weirstra representing them at Colonial Pipeline to comment on how this will affect IFM investors. 
owning $150 billion of infrastructure assets and equity globally. This attack has caused the price of petrol to rise in the USA above $3 a gallon, levels that have not been reached since 2014. And while inflation expectations defined the US market's charter overnight, let us now look at the major newsmakers in the Australian share market. Provider of healthcare imaging software and services. ProMedicus subsidiary Visage Imaging has signed a $14 million eight-year contract with the University of Vermont Health Network Inc or UVM. The contract will see the company's Visage 7 Enterprise imaging platform implemented across UVM's six hospitals providing a unified diagnostic imaging platform across the network. Then world's largest providers of commercial explosives and blasting systems to the mining, quarrying, oil and gas industry, Orica, said its first half net profit dropped 53.6% to 76.7 million Australian dollars after revenue declined 8.9% to 2.6 billion Australian dollars. And Parenti said that a strengthening Australian dollar and lingering headwinds from coronavirus pandemic would weigh on operating earnings in the second half of the financial year 2021. Moving on again, agribusiness Grain Corp reported an underlying EBITDA from continuing operations of 140 million Australian dollars up from 105 million Australian dollars a year earlier. The underlying net profit after tax or NPAT from continuing operations surged to 51 million Australian dollars. Besides, Macquarie said that the Star's proposed merger with Crown Resorts may boost the value of the deal to existing Crown shareholders to $16.45 Australian per Crown share. And next, Tilt Renewables Limited reported muted earnings for the year ended 31st March 2021 on account of fiscal 2021 being a transition year following the sale of the 270 MW Snowtown Two Wind Farm or SWF2 in the prior period combined with the boost in operations at Dundonnell and Waipipi. Thanks for joining us. That's all for now. Stay tuned for more live updates on Calkine TV across the economy, markets and sectors and we will be bringing budget details and analysis to you in the upcoming show so stay glued with us on Calkine TV and this is Sage signing off.